We're staying in Chicago as we shift our focus to one of the largest police scandals that city, or any city for that matter, has ever seen, the case of disgraced Sergeant Ronald Watts. This week, Cook County prosecutors dismiss the cases of more than 100 people who were arrested by Watts and those under his command. For more than a decade, Watts and his team patrolled the former Ida B. Wells housing project on Chicago's South Side, where residents complained that officers manufactured hundreds of cases. Eventually, Watts was convicted on corruption charges and served prison time. I've got Joshua Tepfer, an attorney with the Exonerated Project, and who also represents some of the individuals convicted on evidence presented by Watts and his team of officers. Joshua, thank you so much for coming on. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, as I mentioned, you, you represent uh, 55 of 83 defendants who may have been framed by Ronald Watts. What can you tell us about where some of your cases currently stand? Uh, I actually represent a whole bunch more than that. Um, you know, I probably represent about 150 people who uh, ha are framed, were framed by Ronald Watts and a team of officers. It's not just him, but it's about 15 other officers. So for about six years, um, we've been unpacking all of these convictions that happened during a decade where the Chicago Police Department let this corrupt officer run rampant. Um, in the words of whistleblowing police officers, he was running his own drug line basically a gangster and he was uh, framing and planting evidence on anyone who got in his way. Um, thus far, like we've uh, overturned 135 convictions. There's at least another 60 or 70 in the wings um, combined the 135 convictions. It's something like mm -hmm. in the neighborhood of 300 years of sentences that people uh, all black individuals went to prison for crimes they didn't commit. So it's really one of the most um, notorious scandals in the history of Chicago Police Department, which is really saying something. I mean, you just had a segment on Laquan McDonald's mm -hmm. and, you know, this is many, many years of lives lost um, through, uh, through a corrupt cop and his team that the city let happen. Tell us how some of your clients came to be targets um, of Sergeant Watts and his team, and, and what kind of what kinds of crimes um, were they uh, being framed for? Sure. So these were what he did and his team did were that were they would um, all most of the individuals were in the housing projects in the Ida B. Wells housing projects or other housing projects in the South Side of Chicago. They're all black communities. Um, there was crime in those areas. There was drug dealing going on, but there was also a lot of uh, people trying to live their lives, trying to, it, were living their lives and um, working and, you know, making homes for, for themselves. What Ronald Watts did for a decade is he would partner with drug dealers in that neighborhood, in, in those residents, and he would take cuts of, of those of drug sales. And when anyone who he thought was getting in his way, whether he thought pe whether people were, whether he viewed them as competitors in the drug dealing business, whether he viewed them as trying to expose them or really any other reason, he would get them out of the way. And he would do that by planting evidence on them, routinely violating these individuals' constitutional rights in so many other ways, beatings. Uh, false arrests routinely and testified to this happening routinely and people would go to prison beyond his word because no one was believing these residents who were speaking out about this uh, to anyone who would listen to judges to defense attorneys to prosecutors to the internal affairs division of the Chicago Police Department to all the way up to the highest levels of the Chicago Police Department and they were ignored for 10 years, they were viewed as disposable. They were viewed as um, forgotten and, and, and everyone knew it was true. There was a eight year joint FBI and, and IAD and internal affairs division uh, of CPD investigation into this. Everyone knew it was happening. Uh, back in 2005, the FBI has a report that said it was happening and they let it go on for seven years until Watts went to jail, went to prison for 22 months and one other person with him 18 months in the federal prison. So they let it run wild for about a decade. 
And then no one did anything to stop, you know, the 300, 350, 400 plus years of, of black residents who, who did their time falsely for crimes they didn't commit. Well, let's talk about this report um, on Watts's case that was conducted by the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, and it was sent to David Brown, Chicago's police superintendent, last June. But that report was never released to the public or given to defense attorneys like yourself. The first question that came to my mind, um, Joshua, was why was a report done on Watts just last year when he was convicted in 2012? And then the second question is why would such information that would be considered potential Brady information not be disclosed to members of the bar? Well, first of all, there were literally hundreds of civilian complaints um, through the years while this was going on. This was very well known that this was going on. But the police oversight boards at the time in the city of Chicago, which were then called the Office of Professional um, OPS or IPRA later, um, they swept them under the rug. They didn't do any investigation at all. And they just continually said that these allegations were, quote, unfounded. So Watts and his team continued to run rampant. When Watts went to prison, when the FBI finally got him on one count, I mean, not got him, they had him for as long as they wanted, but when they finally charged him with one count, um, still nothing happened. There was no accountability for the 15 other officers who were part of his team. And nobody, nobody went back to fix the 10 years of wrongful convictions that he caused. In 2015 and 2016, I got involved. I learned about it I, through a case, uh, a man named Ben Baker, who was still in prison on a Watts case for a decade. Um, I took on his case and his wife, Clarissa Glenn, and um, that got some media attention, got some news attention. Um, it was quickly released when we put all the evidence in front of the court about how much, how long this corruption was ongoing. And as a result of that, the new Civilian Office of Police Accountability decided to start a real investigation. That really was an investigation we hand fed them. Nevertheless, it took four years for them to complete a report. And yet to this day, nobody has seen it. Um, it is, you know, as convictions continue to be undone, as Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox and I and other um, advocates are continuing to sort through this and get some justice for some of these people, um, the city of Chicago doesn't care. They continue to try to sweep it under the rug. They continue to pay with taxpayers' expense these officers who were part and parcel of sending 200 African-American housing residents to prison for things that they didn't do. Um, I don't have a good answer for you. And they still won't release this report. Um, there, the law requires, in my opinion, um, after Superintendent Brown has reviewed it to release it publicly. Um, we've sued to release it publicly um, and that's sitting in court. So I, I don't have a good answer for you. Well, Joshua, the city of Chicago clearly has to do more to attempt to right this wrong, right? So many of the people that Watts arrested served time in prison for crimes they didn't commit. Throwing out convictions just isn't going to be enough. So what does accountability look like here? Accountability means, <laughs> you know, um, you know, you're talking about federal charges on Laquan McDonald after he did at least get a conviction. We're not even these guys haven't even been disciplined. The officers, the 15 officers are on the force. They're still getting paid every single day by taxpayers, their salaries with the Chicago Police Department. They still have badges. They're still working, despite the fact that there's, it's not even debatable that they have fabricated, committed perjury, were part and parcel of Watts's everyday corruption for a decade, putting all these people to prison. So <laughs> accountability, of course, start, starts with, making these people not be police officers anymore because they have violated the public's trust. They shouldn't be police officers. They can't be police officers. They're not law. I mean, they don't act as law enforcement officers and they lie. Um, and, you know, I mean, I second thing is there absolutely should be criminal investigations into their ongoing lies. The police officers are deposed in civil rights cases routinely, placed under oath, and they 
fabricate and lie about their testimony. And we know it's lies because there's testimony, sworn testimony of them being in two different places at the same time and testifying to viewing or being part of different arrests that are happening in different areas um, that, that violate physics and uh, at the exact same time. We know they lie because 135 convictions have been thrown out where the allegations are that they lied. So, I mean, it, this isn't, these aren't hard cases. What's hard is for the city of Chicago to, to turn a page and even begin to think about real police accountability in the city. It's, it's a, absolutely astonishing how little they care about the black lives that were, that were harmed for a decade. All right, Attorney Joshua Tepfer, thank you so very much for your time.